Y'all, hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for stopping by. Y'all, we are oot in a boot. We got places to go. We got things to do, and I will tell you all about it as soon as you like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. Yeah, so look at this weather. <laughs> As you can imagine, I do not want to be oot in a boot today, but we got things we got to do. Let me tell you what happened. For Christmas, the intern bought me a set of these fancy DJI microphone, like wireless lavalier microphones. I was all excited until about three days ago when DJI came out with a new version of the wireless microphones and their Bluetooth and they're all the things. So the intern said, just send those back and get the new ones. And I said, okay. So I have about two days to get these in the UPS before they say, oh no, 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 you can't send those back anymore. So in spite of this yickety weather, we got to run and drop those off at the UPS and then y'all, I'm going to use having had to go out in this weather as my excuse to go back to the house, get on the couch. I don't know why, but I feel like I have the air conditioner on. I am cold. <laughs> I'm getting colder, but I'm going to go back to the house, get on the couch, and I'm going to start reading books for my Valentine's Day reading vlog. Y'all saw my TBR. It's about this long. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to narrow it down and pick a book and I think I have done so. I believe that I am going to start with either, no, not either. I'm going to start with Divine Rivals because I've heard people's talk, people's, did I just say people's? I was going to say people's start, but I don't know what I was saying there. I've heard people talk about it and they say that it is fantastic and that it is lyrical and that the writing is beautiful and I'm just in that kind of mood right now. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to run and drop this off hopefully at the UPS box because that's just right up here right up the street. Y'all I do not know what is going on but I seriously feel like the AC is on so I just cut it all off. I turned on my heated steering wheel because I'm freezing right now. Um, I'm going to run, to, what am I even talking about? I'm going to run to the UPS box and hopefully this is going to fit in there because if not, that means I have to run to the actual like mailing store and y'all know that that's right beside the Goodwill store. So if we got to go to the mailing store, we're going to have to go into the Goodwill store. So hopefully we just have to drop this off at the mailbox and we can go home. If not, I'm going to have to drive like up the hill and go to the mailing store. So keep y'all's fingers crossed <laughs> that we don't have to go shopping at the Goodwill because y'all know what that could turn into. So if I do go shopping at the Goodwill, I will come back and let y'all know what I got because y'all know we always find something. At the, that's the Goodwill where I found that those <laughs> funny Utah running Utes sweats that I wear all the time even though I know absolutely nothing about the University of Utah and I am 100% not a running Ute. But anyway, um, <laughs> what in the world so hopefully I'm just gonna run up here and drop this in the mailing box and the, <laughs> I don't know why I don't just say UPS mailbox I don't know why I feel like it's a UPS mailing box but like regular mailboxes or mailboxes y'all I need a nap so I'm gonna run to the UPS mailbox drop this package off hopefully if not I'm gonna run to the UPS mail store drop the package off, run to the Goodwill, and I will let y'all know later. If I go to the Goodwill, I'll check back in. Otherwise, I'm going to go get on the couch, give y'all a little break from me for a little while, because y'all, I know I'm a lot. I do. I know that I'm a lot. So um, I'll go sit on the couch and read for a bit and then check in. I can't remember which lane I need up here. I'll check in later once I have started the book and let y'all know how it is. All right. So I will see y'all at some point. Y'all, I just finished lunch. I've been eating. No, I've not been <laughs> eating Divine Rivals. I've been reading Divine Rivals. I made myself some tea. I'm about to retire to the couch with my furry felons and read some more. But y'all know I got to check in and let you know what's going on because I get to reading too much and I forget what I've told you. And then I'm like, well, can I tell them that? Can I not tell them that? So let me tell you what we know so far. And first of all, let me tell you that I am absolutely in love with this book. I am ensorcelled by the writing. Y'all, it's, it's, 
I hesitate to use the word lyrical because that sounds so like cheeseball and dumb, but it is honestly almost lyrical. Like the words just melt in, I was going to say melt in your mouth, but I'm not reading them out loud. They're like melting on my brain. It's amazing. But anyway, so Iris is our main character and the book starts, I'm going to set it down because I'm going to start banging on it and drive y'all crazy because my microphone is right here. But it starts off with a flashback to her saying goodbye to her brother who was going off to war. How could that possibly go badly for us, y'all? So our main character starts the book off by sending her beloved brother off to war. So I'm already detecting heartbreak. And then we find out that there are these like warring gods or some kind of like divine rivals, these gods that are fighting against each other. And maybe the, maybe the wars are, or the, the humans are proxies for the gods. I don't know. I don't really get it yet, but I've really just started reading. But anyway, so there's a war. There are warring gods. Iris's brother just went off to fight. And so now we are with in, I think we're in like current time with Iris and she is a writer at the local paper and she's there's this dude Roman that like she keeps doing like she has she can't get her stuff together like she's always late or like it's raining and her heel breaks and she's late getting to work and she keeps saying things like, well, I'm late, so maybe Roman is late too. So it seems like she's in competition with this other cat named Roman. And her mom is struggling, like mom's having a hard time. So I'm already detecting like two most definite opportunities for heartbreak here that we may well get our hearts broken by, I mean, because the brother's gone to war, y'all, that things cannot go well there. And then it seems like whenever there's like a stakeholder figure in the character's life who's like a hot mess, bad things happen to that person or they like end up sort of dragging us down a road. So I don't know. I'm worried. I'm, I'm already worried about those two things, but I am quite enjoying the writing so far. So I am going, did I tell you I've got, to, I'm making tea. So I have my tea going. I'm waiting for that to get done. And then I'm going to take my furry felons. I'm going to go to the couch and I'm going to keep reading. So I will check back in possibly later today, but I don't know if y'all can see the clock, but it's like mid afternoon already. So possibly later today, but more likely in the morning, I will check in and let y'all know how things are going. Friends, I have been oot in a boot, running the errands. I'm heading home. Sorry, I just noticed my coffee cup is like rattly. But so I'm heading home, got to do a little more work, get dinner going. I'm, I'm making a pot roast for the intern. I just noticed there's a little free library over there. I should bring them some books. Anyway, you know what? Maybe I'll pull by and look at that whilst we're talking. So that is not why I came to talk to you, to Utes. So I'm going home. I'm going to put a pot roast on for the intern, which means then I can sit on the couch and read books for a while. And y'all, as you know, we are reading Divine Rivals and it is so good. I've been getting comments from my um, Valentine's book haul, like what books we're reading for Valentine's Day. And without fail, everybody's like, well, many of the people, I shouldn't say everybody, but many of the people who come to, I don't know how to get back over there now. I'm going to drive around and get us lost in Proctor, which is hard because Proctor is a very small town. It's like built on a grid. But anyway, um, if the intern's watching this, he's going, oh, honey, you can get lost inside the house. Don't act like you can't get lost in Proctor. I know. Don't be a smarty pants. Anyway, so we are reading Divine Rivals. That's what I was saying. In the comments, everybody is talking about what a fantastic book it is. Y'all, it is so good. So I told you that the writing is just like almost lyrical and it's become more lyrical. So Iris, who sometimes I might call her Violet because remember Violet from Ninth, good Lord. So I mix up Ninth House and Fourth Wing. We got that going for us. And I mix up Iris and Violet. 
I think I just drove over a curb. <laughs> I should not try to drive and talk at the same time. So, all right, I'm going to stop right here and talk to y'all. Then I'm going to go read about that little library thing. So we met Iris. I told y'all about Iris and her brother went to war. So we haven't heard from the brother. So now she's writing him letters and she's putting them in like a closet or a wardrobe or something and they're disappearing. So she's writing these letters to this like long lost brother at war, which y'all I'm on a freaking tack already. And I'm, I don't even know like a hundred pages into this book. So we have Iris writing to the brother who's possibly lost at war. And I told you that she writes for a local newspaper. Well, did I tell you about Roman, the dude Roman at the newspaper that she seems to be like in competition with? Oh, she's in full blown competition with this dude for a job at the newspaper. Like there's one job and the editor's like, okay, y'all are competing for the job. And it's like, I don't know, whoever publishes the most articles or something will get the job. So of course we want Iris to get the job. Well, there's something between Iris and Roman. Like he's mean to her, but in that like, I mean, because I like you kind of way, like they'll pull in your pigtails on the, on the, I almost said on the graveyard. What is wrong with me? Pulling your pigtails on the playground kind of way. Oh, I'm just pulled up here and somebody just pulled into the, like just backed into the parking lot and I'm just sitting here like I own the place. So Roman's acting like, I don't know, he has some kind of feelings for Iris or something. So we'll see what goes with that because the way they interact, it can't, it's not gonna just be some kind of like work rivals thing. So those are my thoughts so far. I'm gonna go home and read. And y'all, as always, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to tell you stuff because I don't wanna tell you stuff that you're gonna be like, what, hello, spoiler alert, why'd you tell me that when I read the book? It wasn't surprising anymore. So let me go figure out about this little like free library thing. And then um, I'm gonna go home and read and I'll come back later and tell you what I learned. Y'all, I just finished riding the bike and I was reading Divine Rivals and I wanted to check in. Did I tell y'all I wasn't gonna tell you anymore? I might've told, I don't know. I don't know if I told you I was gonna tell you one more something or no more somethings, but I'm gonna tell you one more something and then no more somethings. I'll check in at the end and tell you what I thought about the whole thing, but like we're already edging close to spoilers. So I know this is a spoiler, I apologize. But so, I don't have the book because of course I was reading on the Kindle on my bike. So I told you that Iris is our female, ma I was debating between female main character and main character. I mean, she's really kind of our main, main character. She is our protagonist. And her brother has gone off to war. And I think I told you she doesn't know where he is. Like she hasn't heard from him. She's writing him letters and they're like, magically going somewhere and um, as you progress through the book you realize that it's Iris kind of trying to find her place in the world y'all I'm sorry I don't know what this hair is doing I'm gonna go ahead and apologize ahead of time but the book is really about Iris trying to find her place in the world. And, you know, I told you that she's kind of in this competition at her job. She's a, she works for the local newspaper and she's in this competition to, she's like a stringer or whatever. And she's in a competition to get the actual like reporter job. And there's this war going on. And again, at the risk of saying too much, the war becomes a huge part of the story, like the conflict in the war. If I were assigning essays to write about the book, I might offer as an option to write an essay or, you know, to write something about the war as a character in the book, because it truly is like, it's that important to the development of the story. And that, I might offer that as a caveat that y'all there's some warry stuff in this book so like I'm not a fan of war stuff at all like don't watch war shows don't watch war movies like the intern really likes all that stuff and like doesn't even watch those when I'm in the room or like when I'm around because it, it's just so like off-putting to me there's kind of a little bit of a lot of that in this book not so much that I'm like but I mean there's just beware so 
Like if that's something that might be upsetting to you to the point that like you can't, then just don't because it's kind of a lot. But I say all of that to say that the book is really about this young girl trying to find her way and like create a place for herself in the world. And it's really interesting to watch because all of her sort of anchor points get pulled up. So she's, I mean, not to be like overly whatever, but she truly is kind of adrift. And she's trying to figure out how to like moor herself in the world. And uh, okay, enough with the analogies, but <laughs> that's what I got. I'm trying to like tell you things without telling you anything that's going to spoil the book and make you not want to read it. I almost said make you not want to watch it, but absolutely love it. The writing is fantastic. Like it's hypnotic. Like it's one of those, like you'll start reading and just not want to stop reading. I just read like an, or just wrote an extra like 15 minutes because I didn't want to stop reading. And I would have felt guilty just like sitting down reading and not doing anything. So I was like, oh, I'll do one more quick ride. Y'all, I'm about to fall out. I've been riding the bike for two hours and 15 minutes. So I'm gonna, that's, hence all this. So I'm gonna go <laughs> clean myself up, maybe like drink some electrolytes before I completely fall out. I'm gonna finish reading this book and then I'll come back and I cannot imagine not loving it, but I mean, maybe, I don't know, who knows? Cause something, they might, I don't know, blow up all of our friends and then I won't love it anymore. But I will come back in the end, tell you how much I loved it and let you know what we're gonna read after, all right? So y'all enjoy your day, find a good book to read and I will be back later and let you know what's going on. Y'all. We finished Divine Rivals and oh my goodness, it is so good. And Daisy, are you going to move so we can talk to our friends? Thank you. Y'all, we finished Divine Rivals and it was so good. So uh, the end, well, from about three quarters of the way through up until the end, was so good and so suspenseful that I was like on attack, like I could not stop reading. So I was like just devouring it. Well, then I got to the end and I was like, well, now I'm done. <laughs> now there's no more. So now I'm sad and I already miss my friends. And I have the next book already, but I don't even know why I did that to myself because I can't read it yet because we have a plan. And that's not part of the plan. So this dog, I swear. Come on. So I'm done with this. It was amazing. I loved it. And I've already told you everything I can, can possibly tell you. I'm going to turn you a little bit this way so that I'm not all up on Daisy. Um, I've already told you everything that I could possibly tell you without spoiling. And I'm afraid I might have spoiled some things already. So if what you've already seen of me talking about this book seems a little like chopped up and like what... Uh, uh, it's because I probably had to take out some stuff because I may have said some stuff I shouldn't ought to have said. But with all that having been said, y'all, we're done with this. And now we're going to read Butcher and Blackbird. I am so excited. So I've seen this book floating around and I don't know a whole tea ton about it. I know that it's, I think I know that it's about two serial killers. It's like a serial killer love story. And I think the serial killers are hunting other serial killers. And that's really all that I know. And I haven't seen many people talk about it, but the people that I've seen talk about it really like it. Like, I haven't seen anybody be like, eh, Butcher and Blackbird. Like, it's kind of, you know, everybody that I've seen talk about it loves it. So I don't know if people who don't like it, like, read to page three and then stop reading. Or I don't know. But I'm going to start it right now. And I will come back later and let you know what I know. Hey friends, I'm about to get on the bike and go read and ride some, but we are experiencing a slight change of plans. So I thought I would tell you about our new plan before I, you know, start executing. So every once in a while, I will jump and do something and then look back and be like, that might not have been my best idea. Y'all, this is not one of those times. Let me tell you what happened. So what happened was, I was reading Butcher and Blackbird, and I came across, I, dang it, I marked it and then I lost it. But 
Blackbird is telling us about Butcher, and she mentions that he has a slight Irish brogue, or slight Irish accent or something, soft, something about his Irish accent. And so, you know, I was like, okay, whatever, and just kept reading. And then I was like, wait a minute, why am I reading this soft Irish accent in my, like, because, you know, when I read in my head, like, the characters sound like I think they sound, but it's still like my voice sounding like the character sounds. And I was like, well, why am I doing that with my awful impression of an Irish accent when I could just listen to this Irish accent on Audible? So I decided to switch from reading Butcher and Blackbird to listening to it on Audible. And y'all, let me tell you what. This might end up catching me a copyright strike on the YouTubes, but it might not. And the juice is worth the squeeze here. So if there's like a few seconds of silence here, it's because YouTube struck me and took out the, the audio here. Sorry about this hair. I'm going to get this up in a ponytail in a second, but listen to this. This, my friends, is The Butcher. Note. Butcher and Blackbird. Annual August Showdown. Seven days. Tiebreaker by Rock, Paper, Scissors. Best of five. Right? So, I haven't made it far into the book, audio or like actual eyeballs on pages into the book, but I'm not even going to pretend like I think I'm going to switch back and forth. I'm going to lap up every bit of that in the audible version. So, what that means is I need another book to actually read, read. So, I'm going to read The Deal. Here's the deal with The Deal. I believe, well, I know that it's a hockey romance, and I think that my friend Shelby told me that it's a cute story with a bit of spice, but then I'm like, well, hang on. Was she talking about the deal, or was she talking about Icebreaker? And then, like, I was going back and forth, and I was like, all right, whatever. Well, I'm going to read it regardless, because it's on my Valentine's TBR. So I'm going to listen to Butcher and Blackbird. <laughs> Y'all, seriously. And I'm going to read the deal. So I'm about to get on the bike. So I'm going to start this and I'll be back later and let you know what I think about this. And then at some point later today, I will listen to some more Butcher and Blackbird because I got to like do laundry and clean my house. So I'll be able to listen to some more of that and come back and tell you what we think about that. So I will come back later with updates on the deal and Butcher and Blackbird. All right. So y'all have a good day and I will see you later. Y'all. We need to talk about Butcher and Butcher and Blackbird. <laughs> well, by talk about, I mean, we need to talk about why we're not going to talk about Butcher and Blackbird. So, excuse my putzing. I'm putting together my breakfast for tomorrow, and I have book club in a minute. So, I need to multitask because I need to tell y'all what's going on. So, I've been listening to Butcher and Blackbird, and oh my word, this is going to be really noisy. Sorry. So I've been listening to Butcher and Blackbird and oh my word, it is so good, y'all. I love, y'all already know we switched to Audible because the accent of the dude, I couldn't help myself. So the performance is amazing. The writing is so good. But y'all, let me go ahead and tell you, it is so dark. <laughs> I mean, it's two serial killers, so of course it's dark, but it is so dark. And sometimes I think I read things and like, I don't mind the darkness because I'm Gen X, y'all. We grew up with Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger and like those were our playmates back in the 80s and the 90s. So, you know, a little serial killing here and there, that's nothing to us. We watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre when we were kids. So... I say all of that to say that sometimes, I don't know if I want to say I miss the dark, yeah, I do. Sometimes I miss, like, for instance, um, Ninth House. Very dark. I loved it. I still love it. I've reread it so that I can read Hellbent. But, y'all, it is extremely dark, and I didn't even pick up on it until... Was it Gabriella or Michelle? Somebody read it. One of one of y'all read it or started to read it and was like, 
oh my God, this is so dark. I can't read this right now. And when I read that comment, I was like, yeah, I guess it is a bit dark. So I apologize if I forget to mention that things are dark. But honestly, y'all, sometimes it just doesn't occur to me when I'm reading something that's, you know, a bit dark that it's really dark. So Butcher and Blackbird, really dark in the best possible ways. So did I say I'm not going to talk about it? I'm not going to talk about it because, and I'm absolutely serious when I say this, there are lots of things about it that I'm certain are really triggering. Now, I'm not triggered by them, but I'm certain they could be very triggering, like the trigger warning list, y'all, is this long. And I think even like the trigger warning list could be triggering for people. So I don't want to talk about the content of the book at all or any of the details of the story, but I want to tell you that it is witty, it is well written, the banter is amazing. Y'all know how like for me banter will make or break a book. Like even remember the what was the Christmas book we read with the pink cover that was the girl that got dumped the um it was like Legally Blonde and Fifty Shades of Grey that but the banter was so good that like I got over the not awesome sex scenes. I can't remember what it was called. Tis the season for revenge really good banter. I mean, okay, other stuff, but the banter saved it. Y'all, this book has amazing banter. And the the spicy scenes are really spicy. Y'all, they're serial killers. So we're not going to talk about it. That's all I'm going to say. Like, that's part of why we can't talk about it because it's, but anyway, it's very good. I'm not quite done yet, but uh, it's not going to take me much longer to finish it because it's really good but I highly recommend I've also been at the deals over there somewhere I've also been reading the deal and I'm really enjoying that I don't have much to say about that yet except to say that I'm enjoying the writing I like the characters it's I don't remember what I said about it when I first talked about it a little while ago but it's a hockey romance so like you know hockey player and all of his like hockey player dude guys are in the story and then there's the girl and her like you know she's a theater kid I think so or music maybe she's a music she's something she's some kind of like performing person so they're like polar opposites and their friends are opposites and it's kind of fabulous like the very sort of masculine energy you get from him and his sorry I'm trying not to rattle these spoons because it's going to be annoying I apologize ahead of time but the masculine energy you get from him and sort of the I don't know if you I would yeah the sort of more feminine energy we get from her but also creative energy that we get from her friends is really cool but anyway I'm not very far into that because I've been doing a bunch of things so that I could listen to Butcher and Blackbird so I'm going to finish listening to Butcher and Blackbird. I'm going to read some more of The Deal, and I'll come back and let y'all know what's up with that. All right, so y'all enjoy your afternoon, and I will be back when I know something more about a book I can actually talk about. All right, so I'll see y'all soon. Bye. Y'all, we need to talk about some stuff. <laughs> I finished Butcher and Blackbird. Oh, my word. <laughs> so I know. I think y'all already know all this stuff. We love the butcher. I mean, we love the voice of the dude that plays the butcher. The book is so good. Now, I gave you all the trigger warnings, right? Well, at least I warned you that there are a bunch of trigger warnings. And if you're triggerable, you're probably going to get... I mean, I'm not even likely to be triggered. And I got a little... There were a couple of times that I was like, oh, no, no. So mind your trigger warnings but y'all it's so good the I know I told you all about the banter I'm not going back there but character development the story is good the um it's fun like it is there were times y'all know I was listening to it there were times that I had to pause it and back it up for all the laughing I couldn't and of course it's my laughing because I'm the only one listening to it but I couldn't hear for all the laughing. So I had to back it up and play it again to hear what was happening because I was laughing so hard. So very good. I I want to say I 10 out of 10 recommend, but I 10 out of 10 to recommend with the caveat of the, um, sorry, I'm, there's a car sitting up there and I don't think it's the Popo and I'm not speeding, but I, so I don't know why I'm so freaked out by it. I'm acting like I'm a freaking serial killer driving down the road all worried. It's, it's a 
it's, it's a freaking Honda parked on the side of the road. I need to calm down. Anyway, so I recommend, you know, with the caveat that there's, you know, a little bit of cannibalism, some, some killings and lots of nakedness. So Butcher and Blackbird. Now, I also told you that I start, y'all, there's a spot right there on my glasses. So if it's bugging y'all as much as it's bugging me, I apologize. It is driving me crazy. Z. And if it wasn't bugging you before, it is now. So sorry about that. But I've started reading The Deal by, is it L. Kennedy? Um, so good. I haven't started reading it. I've been reading it. I am well into it. And I think I told y'all that it is a like a campus romance between a like artsy fartsy theater nerd girl and a hockey player boy. Y'all, it's so good. So our girl is Hannah and the boy is Garrett. And it kind of seems like it wants to be like a smart girl, dumb jock, but it's not because it's a smart girl, smart jock, but he's struggling in one of his classes. So he tells her that she's going to tutor him and she's like, squeeze me. No, I'm not. So then of course, you know, she tutors him, um, which that's not a spoiler, but I don't want to tell you much because really all of the developments I enjoyed watching all of the things develop but I do want to tell you some things like I want to tell you why I'm enjoying it so much so I love the characters okay I mean you can just assume whenever I say I like a book unless I say even though the banter is a little bit sketch I still like it just assume that it's good banter this has really good banter conversations are good. The character development is good. She is from a small town somewhere in the middle, like not Illinois. Is it Illinois? Indiana? I don't know. Somewhere in the middle. And they go to school in Boston. So she's like far from home. And for some reason, she can't go home. So she is like, it's not even really fish out of water, but it's like fish far away from her home pond and she can't go back to her home pond. I know that's not even a thing. That's not a trope. I just made up a trope, but it adds to your feelings for her character that she has this along with all of the other things that she's dealing with. And she's not like, she's a She's a sympathetic character, but it's not like you feel sorry for her. You know how like some sympathetic characters are like, oh, bless her heart. And you just like spend the whole book like wanting to cry for this. She is not, at least for me, she wasn't that kind of character because she does have things, but she is strong. So I like that about her a lot. And I just love the boy character. Not just because he's a hockey player. Y'all quit that out. I mean, I do like that about him. But I also like that, like, he's a smart meathead character. And he's surrounded by other meatheads. And, but there is depth to him. Like, like I said, he's a hockey player. And he's like the, you know, of course, the star of the team. Because why would we follow somebody who's not the star of the team? And his dad, I think I told y'all at some point somewhere that his dad's a hockey star, but there are like layers to that. So it's just really interesting and there are lots of facets to it. So I probably won't tell you a whole lot more because I feel like I've already told you a whole lot. So I'm going to run. You can see, can you see I'm at the Walmart? You can see I'm at the Walmart. I got to go pick up groceries and pick up my prescriptions. I got to go drop um, a package off at the FedEx and then I'm gonna go home do some work and read books so I'll probably come back in the end and let you know how the deal turns out unless there's something that you need to know about it otherwise I'll be back at the end and let you know how it goes and let you know where we're going from here y'all I just finished reading the deal so I figured we would talk about it I'd let you know what I think and then <laughs> I said I would tell you where we were going next. Y'all, here's where we're going. We're going to wrap up this video. This thing is going to be a year long. So first, let's talk about this. I think I already told you everything that I can tell you about it. I very, very much enjoy it. Did I tell you it's the first book in a series of like a bazillion books? I think I told you that the way that I sort of stumbled backwards into this book was there's a book called The Graham Effect that everybody loves and it's the like sequel to the sequel to some other series that's based on a series based on this series so 
you know how I complain that I buy these? Is it Sarah J. Mass? What's the, the books that I buy that are like this thick that the ones that I think are like so beautiful that I want to read that's like number 15 in the series? So I make fun of myself for that. Mm -hmm. So the Graham effect is seriously like a series off of a series off of this series. This series is like six books long all by itself. But anyway, I very much, ad I know, what are you even talking about? I don't know. I very much enjoyed the deal. I like the characters. We've done all this. I like the banter, blah, blah, blah. The interplay between the characters and the groups of characters is really good. You grow to like the characters, their relationships. You get invested in the relationships between the characters. It's just really good, and it's very cleverly done. There's some spice, but y'all, it's good spice. There are some things that I want to tell you about that I liked so much in this book, but I can't tell you because it's giving away stuff. So I'm not going to tell you anymore, but I liked it very much. There was spice in this one. I don't know. I don't remember what all I told you. So y'all know, I know we talked about how spicy Butcher and Blackbird was. Divine Rivals. There was a little bit of like naked stuff rubbing together in this one, but I don't feel like it was very spicy. And I'm totally questioning myself now because I'm wondering if I'm like <laughs> comparing everything to Butcher and Blackbird, which is seriously like, I mean, it's like the kind of spice that like, I mean, it's like set your face on fire, chicken wings, spicy. So compared to that, this was not spicy at all, but there is some spice, like a little bit of spice in this. And then there's like legit spice in this, but not this kind of spice. So what... I loved all of these books. Divine Rivals, very charming, very well written, almost lyrical. It's just a pleasure to read. Butcher and Blackbird, it's funny, interesting, very witty. The way that the characters interact and come together, serial killers doing serial killer stuff and getting naked. And then The Deal, absolutely love. It's a college romance, so lots of college kids, college things. They're doing college kind of stuff, and I would say this is like new adult, that like in a category, so it's not young adult, but I also don't think that it's like literary fiction, so it's a little like less developed, less involved than literary fiction, like this is literary fiction. <laughs> it's the back of the book. Divine Rivals is most definitely literary fiction. This is not literary fiction, but it's also not YA. So what am I even talking about? I'm going to get out of here, y'all. I liked all three of these books. I recommend them with the caveats that I already gave you about Butcher and Blackbird. Do not get me talking about Butcher and Blackbird again. So all of those are thumbs up. I recommend. And y'all, let me know what you think. Have you read any of these? What are you reading now? What are you planning on reading? I think... I think my next read, I think I'm finally going to start the Akatar series. So keep an eye out for that, y'all. I believe I'm going to read that and we will talk about that in my next book video. Y'all, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. If you made it this far, we are most definitely friends. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with the shenanigans. I upload food and fitness videos the beginning of every week with some book videos sprinkled in between. See you on the next one.